Hello and welcome. Well, as hard as it is to comprehend with a year that has been 2020 so far, we have just commenced the start of our new financial year. And everybody loves the opportunity for a considerable and lovely big chunky tax return, but no one ever really enjoys the arduous and art ordeal of having to prepare the information to submit to the ATO. And considering that Australia is in the midst of a recession, every dollar this year that we receive back in our tax returns is going to count. But the question is, what are we entitled to claim? And how can you ensure that you're prepared to get the most out of your return? Well, lucky for us, we welcome our special guest today, Mark Chapman. He's the Director of Tax Communications from H&R Block, who's here to tell us all. Thank you so much for joining us, Mark. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Rachel? Yeah, this is really, really exciting, this conversation. And as we were just chatting offline, this is going to help many Australian families and there's lots to cover. But firstly, I guess as the Director of uh, Tax Communications, I guess you would be everybody's best friend this time of year. Now tell me, how many times at the moment do you receive, I guess, a call or a text message from a friend just saying, I've just got a quick question to ask you. <laughs> do you uh, get that a yeah, lot? Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's certainly that time of the year. Everybody wants a little bit of tax advice about what they can claim or how a job keepers treated, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and that's been going on for quite a while, uh, it has to be said. So, yeah, absolutely. Very much in demand. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you definitely be everybody's friend or best friend at the moment, the friend that everybody would love to have. Now, um, with the large percentage of us working from home, this year's tax return may seem a little more confusing than normal, to say the least, and provided that we have to calculate and take into consideration all of our living expenses like electricity and internet and now in the winter months um, heating. Um, so we're going to deep dive into all of these questions in just a moment uh, with the hope that you're get, going to share some easy ways for families to submit a claim this year. But before we get to those questions, um, we published your article titled Top Tax Hacks uh, to get the most out of your tax return. So for someone who hasn't read the article yet, could you please just give us an overview of what it's about and tell us what inspired you personally to write this? Yeah, so the, the main point of the article is just to highlight the things that are really relevant to people at this time of the year. As we, well, at the time I wrote the article, we were heading towards the end of financial year. Obviously, now we're well and truly into tax return season. So it was all about bringing out those themes around the kinds of deductions that people can typically claim, amongst which are the working from home deductions that we'll talk about, but also you know, other things like work related clothing and work related travel, um, uh, the sorts of documentation that you need to be able to support your claims because that's really important uh, by and large if you don't have invoices receipts that kind of thing you can't make the claim and if you don't have that the ATO could end up auditing you and that could cause some issues so it was all about explaining to people what the, they need to be able to do to really get the best out of their tax return get the highest refund and uh, be able to submit their tax return you know hopefully with a minimum of stress and hassle Yes, and we'll have a link through to your article in the show notes. So to begin with, could you maybe just explain to us what are the big new changes that will affect Aussie tax returns this year then? Uh, look, probably the key thing is around uh, deductions, the deductions that people can claim. So, uh, you know, the way people work has completely changed since about March this year, obviously due to COVID-19. So a lot of, of the deductions that people would normally have claimed, you know, for, for, for using their car for work purposes or going on work-related trips or uh, claiming work-related clothing, a lot of those claims will probably have gone by the wayside a, a little bit since, since March. But uh, to compensate against that, about 35-40% of, of, of people have actually been working from home full-time. It's a large percentage, isn't it, really? It, yeah. it is. Millions of Australians are, are working from home. Uh, and that means that there are certain deductions that they can claim in relation to doing that, in relation to those extra costs that they're now incurring. So, uh, you know, the deductions that people are claiming are going to look a little bit different. Some have gone up, some have gone down. On the income side, you know, people are earning uh, potentially JobKeeper, which is something they may never have seen before. Yes. Uh, they, might, they might have lost their job altogether and they might now be on JobSeeker. Uh, they may have been made redundant and receive some sort of redundancy payment. All of these things flow through into your tax return. You know, there, there are questions about whether these sorts of payments are taxable or not. And obviously that's a, a, an area I'm happy to talk about. And people have taken money out of super. 
um, you know, up to ten thousand uh, dollars so far, and with another ten thousand dollars that they can potentially take out now. So uh, those payments are not tax uh, are not taxable, but that's not something that a lot of people necessarily understand. So there's some confusion about how those payments uh, are, are treated on their tax return too. Yeah. So what are, the, I guess, the biggest mistakes normally made when people are filling in their ret- return? Oh, look, about 25% of people who lodge themselves using uh, the government's MyTax uh, system uh, will, will, take, will make some kind of mistake in relation to their tax return. That's a lot, um, really, isn't it, when you think? It, it is, but it's, it's very easily done. And, and the most common things that, that, that people get wrong is that they claim a deduction when they don't have the, uh, uh, the proof that they spent the money. Um, uh, sometimes people will claim uh, for some sort of uh, uh, private uh, expense that isn't deductible in the first place. And that can often include things like, um, you know, the cost of the commute to and from work. Some people think that that's tax deductible and it isn't. Um, uh, you know, potentially people can claim uh, things in, in relation to working from home that aren't deductible, like uh, uh, part of their, their, their mortgage interest or, the, or their rent, those kinds of things. So, uh, you know, that, that, again, that's, that's quite a common uh, thing that, that, that can happen. And another common one is that people miss off uh, income from their tax return. Uh, particularly around this time of the year in early July. Um, uh, a lot of that information is automatically downloaded from the ATO, but the ATO doesn't necessarily already have that information at, at this point in time. So bank interest, you know, you might have a, a, a balance sitting in a bank that's earned some interest. You've forgotten about that and you've not included the interest on your tax return. So again, that's something that trips up a lot of taxpayers. Yeah, and do you think the Aussies this year will be facing um, added stress at tax time due to all the changes associated with COVID-19? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, about 60% of Aussies find uh, doing a tax return stressful anyway, and and that was before COVID-19 came along. So you add on all of these extra changes, these these different deductions, these these additional income streams that people didn't have before, and you know it can make things really quite complicated and stressful because if people don't understand how these things flow through into their tax return, um, you know the scope for mistakes is increased. Yeah. And you mentioned in the article that um, we should only claim what we are entitled to. So could you please maybe just talk through some of those common deductions that many taxpayers can claim? Yeah. So, well, the the most common one at the moment are the working from home uh, expenses. Mm -hmm. Um, So, um, and there are different ways of, of, of claiming that just to make it even more confusing. There isn't one way of claiming you're working from home expenses. There are actually three ways you could potentially claim. I'm gonna, we're gonna um, add, and we'll dive into all of those, those um, later on the chat yep. because they are, this, this, this particular year is, is quite confusing, isn't it? With the, with the breakdown of three, but yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we'll come on to that. The other yeah. common ones, um, if you use your car for work purposes. So if you're, you know, at work and you go off to meet a client or, uh, uh, you go off to another uh, office of your workplace. You know those deduct those journeys are, are potentially deductible. Um, if you have to go away for a period of time, you know to to, to a conference or you travel interstate with work, uh, usually those expenses are going to be deductible, assuming that your employer hasn't covered those costs. Um, the costs of work-related clothing. If you have to wear a uniform for work or you have some form of protective equipment uh, in relation to your work and you spend money on that that would be deductible and again very topical at the moment because look because lots of people have been uh, going out and buying things like face masks and uh, antibacterial spray hand sanitizer um, those sorts of things are all potentially deductible as, as protective equipment oh, wow uh, yeah absolutely so particularly if you're uh, in a very much a, a sort of customer facing uh, job like a, uh, uh, a hairdresser or working in a, a, a beauty salon or working in healthcare. Um, so th- the chances are you're having to interact with people in a way that's not socially distanced. Um, so that expenditure on, on PPE, personal protective equipment, is, is going to be tax deductible in those sorts of circumstances. Um, courses, if you, go, uh, if you go on a course, a work-related course, uh, that's usually deductible. Um, so lots of things I could go on, but those are the, the, the big ones that, uh, that would apply to a lot of people. 
Yes, and we do have that information listed in the article. And just to clarify, as you mentioned earlier on, with the travelling um, for work, it's not the travelling to and from work, it's only yes. during the hours of work. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. So the journeys that you do during your working day, um, you know, to the to the clients or the suppliers or to the other office, uh, they're going to be uh, deductible. But the journey to and from work at the beginning and the end of the day, that's not deductible. And that's one of the big mistakes that people often make. Yes, yes. And so when and how can people claim deductions, um, I guess, from working from home and what items can they claim and what can't they claim? Yeah, so if you're working from home now, um, then you can claim... Uh, those expenses that you that relate to uh, your home working um, the easiest way of doing that before I get into the ins and outs of what you can potentially claim but the absolutely the easiest way of doing this is to simply claim uh, a new set rate that the ATO has uh, uh, put in place and it's 80 cents per hour so basically you just keep a record of all of your hours uh, of work you know a timesheet or a diary or something like that multiply the number of hours by uh, 80 cents and that gives you your deduction so you know if you've worked for instance uh, uh, 500 hours over the course of the COVID-19 period because you've been working full-time from home multiply that by 80 cents and that gives you your deduction which would be whatever that is it's about 420 dollars or something um so this would be for things like heating cooling lighting water bills um depreciation of home and office furniture fittings would, would it be um yes computers um and things all, like computer ink and um printer ink i mean would you yeah, say so it includes all of those uh you can't claim anything else if you want to claim that 80 cent per hour rate um the other way of doing it which will usually in fact almost always give you a bigger deduction but it's harder to work out is to claim each individual item uh, based on your actual expenses so all of the things you've just listed uh, you, you, the, the proportion of your electricity bill your gas bill uh, the costs of any uh, home office furniture that you might have bought during COVID so the, yeah the desk the chair the stationery the printer ink uh, the use of your mobile phone the use of your home internet if you've gone out and actually bought a computer or a laptop or a, a tablet all of that you can claim all of those individual items uh, based on that your work related proportion so you've got to work out how much of each expense uh, relates to your work uh, which expenses you've actually incurred in the first place and you can claim those on an item by item basis that will usually give you a bigger claim but it's harder to work out and you do need all of those uh, supporting documents you need the invoices for your expenses you know the the, 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 the bills to cover things like your uh, phone or your internet or your electricity uh, you might need to work out how big your home office is compared to the size of your home overall. So it can get quite complicated and that's where it's really useful to have a tax agent uh, involved because they'll work that out for you rather than you having to sort of sit down and work out all these different percentages and, and everything you know, else. The, the so, complicated so you, bits. Yeah. So the ATO this year has introduced a temporary shortcut method of calculating the additional running expenses, allowing the working from home uh, to claim a rate of 80 cents per hour working during the coronavirus crisis. So is it right yes. that this um, will apply from the 1st of March until um, the 30th of June, 2020? Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So that's the 80 cent method that I talked about uh, earlier on. Uh, that was, well, it was supposed to apply until the 30th of June. Um, so it, it's good for the tax returns that you're about to put in now. I suspect the ATO will extend that because most people are still working from home. So um, they've not said anything yet, but I think that will probably apply this tax year this as well. So if we use the 80 cent per hour method, um, we can make no other claims in relation to working from home. So the items like you mentioned before um, yep. and mobile phone, internet usage are all included in the 80 cent per rate. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's right. That's right. So is, um, sorry, go. <laughs> no, I was just, just going to say, typically uh, that 80 cent rate, as I say, will generally give you a smaller deduction. Because um, if you just think about it, you know, the amount of, uh, your mobile phone usage alone that you're using at the moment if, if you're uh, using your mobile phone extensively for work um, just those costs alone will, will, will be quite expensive and there's no way that 80 cent rate is actually going to cover that so it's a nice simple method of working it out uh, but it won't give you the best deduction so that is an existing flat rate allowance is, is uh, that is, is that the no, flat? Just, no 
just to complicate things, there is a third way of doing this, which is oh. a, a, a different flat rate allowance of 52 cents per hour. That's the one that's always been around. The 80 cent one is, is new. The 52 cent rate uh, covers most of those home office expenses, but it doesn't cover your uh, mobile phone. It doesn't cover your home internet doesn't cover the cost of any tech items that you've got out and bought like a computer or a tablet so all of those things can be claimed in addition to the 52 cent rate so that's just a third way of doing it that usually gives you a better deduction than the 80 cent rate uh, but a, uh, a, a lesser deduction than claiming the actual costs so you know it can get quite complicated working out which one is going to give you the best result and then actually working it out that's where you know getting a, a tax agent involved will usually remove all of that uh, that, that stress. stuff so both of the 80 cent and the 52 cent um, options should um, we have kept a diary and, note, and noted the times that we start each day and the times that we have our breaks. Um, yep. is, is that for both or is that only for the 52 cent per hour? For working That's for home? both. That's for both. You're going to need that, uh, that record of your hours uh, in order to work out what your deduction is going to be because you multiply the number of hours worked by the, uh, the flat rate, whichever one you use, and that gives you a deduction. If the ATO comes along and says, how have you worked this out? You might need to produce that diary or those timesheets just to prove that you were actually working the hours that you claimed. And what about claiming on the work proportion of items such as home internet, um, mobile phone, printer ink? How does that work then? Uh, well, first of all, you need to work out uh, to what extent the, the, the cost that you're claiming for relates to your work use and to what extent it relates to your private use. Um, and that's where it gets complicated because it, it, with things like your electricity bill, for instance, obviously your home office is just part of your house. So you can't claim for the entire electricity bill. You can only relate, claim for the bit that relates to your home office. That's the thing, yeah. And also the only, only for the part that relates to when you're in there working. So not when you're in there just surfing the internet or paying your bills or, or, or the kids are using it for homeschooling. Or watching so, Netflix. Yeah, exactly. So you can't claim for those bits. So that's where it gets complicated because you've got to work out how much of your home relates to your home office and then how much of the use of that office relates to your work. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's a, obviously for, for every different household, that will be a different calculation, but you do need to have a stab at doing that or your tax agent needs to have a stab at doing that so that you can work out what the percentage would be. There's no real rule of thumb other than to say, if you're thinking of claiming 95%, forget it because that's not, you know, that's never going to fly. Um, you know, it could be 10%, 15%. Those are cut usually the kinds of figures that you're looking at, but you've, you've really got to do, have a, at least have a stab at that calculation just to figure out what it should be. What about claiming on the actual costs that we have incurred? Uh, what do we do um, and what needs to be done here then? Yeah, so that's where you, you take that uh, work percentage and then you just apply that to the cost. So, you know, if you determine that, you know, 10% of your, uh, for instance, your electricity bill relates to the cost of lighting your home office and heating your home office, then you just claim 10% of whatever your electricity bill is on a monthly or quarterly basis. Um, that sounds simpler than it is because obviously <laughs> working out that work-related percentage, you see, is the difficult bit, if you like. So this works out the work relation proportion of um, our household expenses and applies this percentage to the actual yep. amount that we spend on our electricity, our gas, water, phone, internet, all of that stuff. So do we need to have kept all the original uh, bills to prove the claim? And does this, I guess, generally produce a bigger claim than either one of the uh, 80 cent or 52 cent rate methods? Yeah, so the, the, the bad news is there is that you do need to keep all of those receipts. So mm -hmm. all, you know, all of your phone bills, electricity bills, the uh, receipts that you might have got for purchasing your computer or your desk, you've got to have kept all of that. Um, the good news is that, yes, it does produce a bigger deduction. Um, uh, it, everybody, everybody's different. Every household is different. But on average, uh, the deduction doing it that way will usually be three, four times bigger than oh, if you gosh. simply use the it. 80 cent rate. So it is worth it. Um, if you've not kept the paperwork, unfortunately, probably, you know, it's too late now. But if you have, it's definitely worthwhile trying to work that out because, it, as I say, it will potentially pay off by a much bigger deduction.
So the downside is that the amount of paperwork and calculation involved is much greater, but pretty much that we should use maybe a tax agent to help with a claim, I guess, if you intend to use that method, would you say? Oh, absolutely. It is complicated to work out. There is a lot of paperwork involved. Uh, Get somebody else to work it out for you, um, and that will make it a lot more straightforward. And with regards to children, do children need to lodge a tax return? Uh, They can do, potentially, in theory. I mean, if they have uh, some form of income, then they might need to lodge a tax return. So, you know, if they've got a a, a, a part-time job and and that's paying them more than the the tax-free threshold, then they might need to lodge. Um, If they've received JobKeeper, you know, a a lot of people uh, might have had a part-time job that wasn't actually paying them very much. Um, Mm -hmm. But as a result of JobKeeper, suddenly they're getting $1,500 a fortnight, which might have been substantially more than they were getting before. So again, that could have tipped them into a position where they might have to pay tax, and that could mean they have to lodge a tax return. Um, If you've got some investments that you've put in your your children's names, um, you know, shares or a bank account, that could produce dividends or interest. Uh, And again, that might to mean that they have to lodge a tax return although there's usually issues there as to whether the income that's been produced is actually the child's income or whether it's actually really the parent's income so there's a there's a bit of a conversation that needs to happen there to determine whether it's actually the child's tax liability or yours as the parent Yes. And, and getting back to JobKeeper and job seeker payments, um, will people have to pay more on their tax return this year or less with regards to the, those particular payments? Yeah, it depends on circumstances. Um, so both JobKeeper and job seeker are taxable, so they do need to go on to your tax return. Um, if you're on JobKeeper, your employer will just include all of that in your year-end uh, payment summary or your income statement, as it's called now. So you shouldn't have to do too much in terms of admin there. It's just It will just appear from da- directly from the ATO. Um, if you're one of those people who has, ha- has basically had a pay rise because of JobKeeper, so you're previously earning you know, less than $1,500 a fortnight, and now you're getting that $1,500 uh, JobKeeper, that could mean you'll have a higher tax bill this year because your income uh, could it's work increased. out to be, to, be, to be higher. Alternatively, if you're in probably the, the bigger category of people who've actually taken a pay cut because of JobKeeper, so you might have been earning two, two and a half, whatever, uh, per fortnight before now you've gone down to 1500 because of JobKeeper um, you could find yourself in a position where actually you're going to get a bigger refund uh, because you've overpaid tax during the earlier part of the year um, and the fact that your income has been reduced for those last three or four months will flow through into a potentially quite a significantly bigger tax refund. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess there's a reason why 74% of Australians <laughs> use a tax agent to help prepare their tax. tax yeah, can absolutely. Be- very, very complicated. And I guess if you get it wrong, um, you can either receive a lower refund or have to deal, I guess, with ATO penalties, as you said at the start of our chat, which wouldn't be very nice email or phone call to receive. That's, that's for sure. (laughs) But what about um, the people who do um, lodge their own and have previously lodged their own? What about the pre-filled forms from the ATO? You know, what should we be aware when, um, when using them in particular? Yeah, so these days, a lot of your income information, especially, does get um, automatically filled in by the ATO. So uh, your employer will send your information across to the ATO, and that will then just drop straight into your tax return. Same with things like bank interest, if you've had any of that, or or dividends on shares. Your private health information uh, gets sent straight to the ATO and just goes straight into your tax return. Uh, that's really helpful from the perspective of people who are self-lodging because it means they don't have to worry about uh, uh, finding all of their pay slips and uh, adding it all up. It just gets uh, dropped straight into your tax return. The problem is, particularly in July, particularly in the first half of July, a lot of that information hasn't appeared yet. So your employers haven't sent your stuff across to the ATO. Your private health fund hasn't sent the information to the ATO. So if you're lodging um, for the you know, first two or three weeks of July, you might find that there are gaps. Um, and it's up to you to spot that those gaps are there and either decide to wait until the information comes through 
or if you want to lodge earlier, to be able to put that information in manually. So there is a bit of a burden of responsibility on taxpayers. Don't assume that just because uh, information is pre-filled from the, the ATO that it's correct and it's all complete. It may well not be. Once you get into August, this, this problem kind of disappears because everybody's done what they need to do. It's all there. It, it all gets pre-filled automatically. But for July lodgers, they've just got to be a little bit careful. Otherwise, they might end up having to re-lodge their tax return later on once the information comes through. So when so should people possibly wait till mid-July then to, to lodge yeah. their return, would you say? Yeah, once you get through into about the third week of July, you've got a bit more confidence that that information is complete. Uh, once you get to the end of July, you can be you know, 95% confident that it's complete. Everything. You've always just got to be aware that there could be things missing. So do just do a bit of a check. Um, but yeah, as we get into late July, early August, you can be pretty confident that everybody's done what they need to and all of your information will be there. Yeah, it is much less less stressful, I guess, to either uh, pass your information onto a tax agent. Um, they would know the best time to lodge, I guess, that information. Um, and especially this year, with all the added calculations, um, with working from home expenses, it's going to be even more so challenging, I guess. But yeah, that's um, right. I'd love to know from your perspective, how can Aussies determine whether they should lodge the tax return either online um, via a tax agent or um, themselves? Look, if you've got a, a very straightforward tax return, so you know you might have just had one job during the course of the year, um, very limited deductions, um, you know, maybe a bit of bank interest, then you could, you're probably fine to, to lodge yourself through 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 my tax. Um, but if your taxes are looking a little bit more complex, um, if you've had you know more than one job, perhaps you, you might have been working multiple jobs at the same time. If you've got a business, if you've got rental properties, if you've got um, you know, different deductions like the working from home ones that we've just talked about, in those kind of situations. It, it's going to become increasingly difficult for you to do it yourself and get it right. Uh, and that's the kind of situation where you probably need to be thinking about using a tax agent to do it for you, um, just so that you're, you know, you're not making those common mistakes in, in terms of claiming things you're not entitled to or, or not claiming things you are entitled to. You're not missing things off uh, and you know, you're, you're avoiding all of those common traps that, that people fall into. And and what about the face to face? Um, I mean, I've every year gone in and seen my accountant face to face, um, had a good old catch up on life and how things been the last twelve months and all of that stuff. But by the looks of things, with with social distancing this year, uh, that may not be the case. So, I mean, what what is sort of I guess the status quo now with um, with tax agents? Everything is now done online or or not? No, I mean, you can do tax agents. Uh, you can do uh, returns online through a tax agent. I mean, at H&R Block, we do have an online service that you can use if you don't particularly want to have that face-to-face -face interaction. Uh, having said that, you know, all of our offices are open, and that's the, the case for most tax agents. You know, they, everybody's socially distanced these days so the offices are set up to accommodate social distancing uh, there, there are you know hand sanitation uh, areas uh, so you, you don't need to be concerned that, uh, that, that, that they're potentially difficult environments that that's that's been taken uh, taken care of uh, having said that it, it is still possible for you to use uh, 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 telephone uh, appointments so you can basically do your tax return over the phone um, you can do it online there are lots of different ways of, of, of you know, getting into a tax agent's expertise and that could include face-to-face -face, or it could include uh, you know zoom conferencing like like this or it could include uh, phone or, or simple online service where you're not actually interacting uh, directly with a tax agent at all you're just downloading your information into a portal uh, our staff will then take that information prepare the return and then send you the return back lots of different ways of doing it this year yes and so where, where you need examples of of um uh, like, like bills and those types of things is, is it just a matter of taking a photo of those bills and or having some form of evidence that you would then sort of include in that online um, submission 
Then yeah, if you're doing it online, you can uh, uh, download or upload, whatever the word is, <laughs> uh, documents into a portal so that the person who's preparing the return can actually see the, uh, the substantiation. Um, obviously, if you're doing it face to face, you can just produce the, uh, the, the documentation. Uh, so, you know, mm -hmm. it's always possible for uh, if the tax agent wants to see that proof. Uh, it's always possible for that to, you know, to be done either electronically or, or the old fashioned way. Do you think this will change things in the future then? So, you know, you, you would pray to, to the heavens above that this time next year that we um, would be sort of COVID clear um, and this COVID recession um, would sort of hopefully be been and, and been and gone. But uh, I just wonder if all of this online submission will continue to increase for years to come. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Oh, look, I, th I think this is a trend that, that's been around for a while anyway. Um, you know, the... <laughs> People like to interact in, the, in relation to this kind of thing in different ways. Some people like to do it face to face across a desk in an office and they do like to have that human interaction. Other people are, are, are quite happy to just do it all online. Um, and that's been a trend you know, for several years now. So I think COVID-19 has really just locked in those trends. Mm -hmm. uh, it might accelerate the, the shift from one to the other, or, or it might not. Who knows? We might just go back to, to normal once we get to a situation where this is under control and we've got a vaccine. It'll be interesting to see how that flows through. But I think there's, there's always going to be a, a lot of people who do actually like to go into an office and just uh, Still you know, spend, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just get that human contact and uh, you know, the, the old-fashioned way, if you like. Yeah, well, who knows where the world will be in 12 months' time. But for, for the meantime, we, we definitely have some challenges or just a little bit more challenging sort of tax return this year. And this chat has been extremely helpful, um, no doubt, for, for all of our listeners and everyone watching. So um, if you were to, I guess, summarise your key messages, Mark, for everyone watching and listening, what would they be? I would just emphasise that this tax return is probably going to look a little bit different for a lot of people. Uh, different income, different deductions. Um, you might not be too uh, comfortable with the way some of the things that have changed will actually impact your taxes. So, you know, if you are feeling a little bit uh, concerned, a little bit stressed about doing your tax return this year, particularly because you could be looking at a bigger refund, um, it is worthwhile going to talk to uh, 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 one of our H&R Block uh, offices or, or just using a tax agent generally. Um, as I say, it is a lot less stressful doing it that way rather than trying to use uh, my tax, which is where a lot of people tend to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, as mentioned before, in the show notes, we'll have a link through to your article, which goes into depth about that 80 cents and the 52 cents um, sort of uh, claiming options and, and all of the other information. But um, aside from that, if anyone else has got any other questions for you and or anyone at H&R Block, whereabouts can they find you guys? Oh, we're on the uh, on the web. Just search for H&R Block, and you'll you'll find us. We've got about four hundred and fifty offices across Australia, that so many. you're never too far away. Absolutely, Jeez, you're never too Louise. far away from one from one of our offices. <laughs> so find your local one. Um, give them a call if you want some uh, some advice, or book an appointment if you actually want to do your return. Wonderful. Thank you, Mark, so much for your time today. It's been a great pleasure speaking with you. Take care and stay safe. Take care. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Cheers. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye.